Okay, hello everyone. This is YouTube channel 19 Sir John, and today we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial um, from the from requested by Ultra Slant 133, and today we're going to be doing a Mewtwo sculpt from Pokemon. Um, and let's just get started. Uh, no. All right, so I already took the liberty of gathering references to save time. I gathered the references from Google Images, um, and we can see them by taking down the see taking down the see through, so you can see through it. Um, all right, so let's just get started. I'm gonna get started by sculpting out the head, um, head of Mewtwo. You see, I took a lot of different camera angles and stuff like that um, to see um, YouTube scope okay I'm gonna this is annoying me right now so I'm just gonna turn this down um, <laughs> recording the audio put that down here or something all right all right yeah just take a minute to look at the references right here um, yeah, right here I just did a, a few side headshots and stuff like that. Um, the reason I picked these images specifically was because they captured certain things that I liked about Mewtwo, um, what I thought he represent, or what it represented, and and like his base form right here. Like right here, I like his general base form right here, but I didn't like his base form. Like I didn't like his lower body right here, but I did like it right here, and I thought it cut closer to him. And also this shot right here just gave a essence of his proportions because um, when sculpting, when drawing or whatever, um, the most important thing to me is um, proportions. Like the details and all that, that's, that's like, to me that's like painting. So the most important thing is proportions. That's what someone looks at. Um, everything else is filler. All right, so let's get started. Just going to start sculpting the head. Um, take it down, subdivision is down a few, um, and then I'm going to use the um, clay build up tool to sculpt out the base form. I already have symmetry on. All right, just going to start filling that in. Get the cheeks in. Right now, I'm looking at this image. Um, <clears throat> getting the base form in. Um, yeah. Originally, I started sculpting Pokemon and stuff like that was because I sculpted Pokemon as a child uh, with my brother and. And because me and my brother sculpted as a child, Pokemon, I mean, um, because me and my brother uh, drew Pokemon when we were children, uh, you know, our skills got better, you know. And, and Pokemon, they're, they're really quick and easy to do. Um, so, so we felt, like, good when we um, finished a lot of different sculpts. Um, and so... You know, the next thing we knew, we 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 sculpted all 150 or 160 Pokemon, and and we just felt really good about it, and it just made us want to continue to draw. Uh, later on, my brother became a musician, and I continued to um to draw, and eventually I I started to sculpt, and I thought um thought it'd be awesome to to um try and gain some more experience uh, by scoping. All right, right now I just used the slash tool, but that's too intense, so I'm gonna turn down the intensity on the slash tool by pressing U um, and sliding that intensity down. Then now when I scoped on it, it's it it's less drastic um, results. All right, and then I'm gonna use the grab tool. Um, me, personally, I use hotkeys all the time because hotkeys make things go faster. Um, rather than having to look for the button or press the button, it's like 
automatically there like if you just think I want to move this then you just press a certain button and you move it um, I also use the the trim dynamics key and that's what I'm going to use to like shave some off right there yeah that's nice all right um, just get in some general form um, first off I pick um, a view that I like a sculpting view that I like and then I um, try and make all these images I try and combine them into one based on how much I like them and then and then like make them look like each other but first I try and stick with one image instead of um, trying to use many different images that I like and putting them together but just doing it one at a time so I'm gonna try and fill out the back of his head some some more and right off the bat I'm gonna save this so that um, ZBrush can use its quick save automatic save function awesome new feature um, save it to the desktop um, you to sculpt perfect all right so after I work for a little while um, it's gonna pop up like saving auto saving which is terrific really good idea to make that I'm gonna decimate this I'm holding control and and then dragging on the screen if you have the the dynamesh selected then it'll um, it'll it'll read apologize like like just do a quick over of your geometry um, <clears throat> and I try not to make basic tutorials really because um, I like I like teaching like people who are like passionate about it and people who want to like really go to the next level so this scope like the like the video tutorials that I did before the, of the speed scopes I refer to them as tutorials because it does show technique um, you know if you know how to do all the other steps and stuff like that it does show techniques but but sometimes it's good to you know show the basics too maybe you might cover something that um, that other people may not have covered because I've searched and I looked through many tutorials and hopefully maybe I can show or offer something that maybe you haven't seen in another tutorial that you looked at um, all right still working on the form drawing out these general shapes sometimes when I work on the form um, I use Sculptress uh, that's a really great program for uh, working on the form because when you're working in Sculptress you don't really have to like if I wanted to draw a nostril I'd just like draw that in there that's why you'd see me like in some of my videos switching from um, ZBrush to Sculptress because I'd be able to have more freedom and liberty to plan out and, and just like form form my um gonna take this down a little bit and get that eye shape in there gonna use the dyne uh Damon standard brush turn down the intensity because I already know it's gonna be high and turn that intensity up some and yeah get that eye shape in there so that I can look at all the different camera angles and views and and line them up <clears throat> alright um, I don't have enough space to like move him around you see he comes off space right here so I'm gonna um, make a new document no and then draw it out and then press T and then now I have more space uh, without you know my mesh being cut off um, so now that I have like the side angle roughly uh, pushed out um, I'm gonna work on it a little bit more and then I'm gonna gonna look at some other angles and try and scope those out to get them to line up properly I don't need the lineups to be exact but just enough so that um, it looks like the character because um, that's the most important thing it's more important to 
to line up to make it look like the character more than to have it line up with that specific image that you have because these all these references they're all 2d references and it's not gonna in, unless they like really tried hard to line them up all the images up with you know it's like very difficult to try and line up 2d images you know um, unless you're doing a character character sheet um, which these aren't then you shouldn't really um, be so like like dependent on on the um, references you use I mean it's good to be um, it's good to look at the references and take it into account but you don't want to be going back and forth all the time um, with your with your references sheet because they don't line up um, I, I feel like I need some more resolution in my mesh be extremely helpful so I turned up the resolution um, in this sidebar right here I, I made my custom menu sheet so it has like a whole bunch of um, custom things that are just convenient for me to reach at a time it helps the speed a lot um, I find that when I'm um, working and I don't have my custom menu and I don't have my hotkeys then then I feel like I'm slower without them so if you really want to pick up some speed and work faster then my suggestion to you would be to um, make a custom um, menu and also make hotkeys and save them out so when you use them in other softwares that you can transfer them over and work just as fast um, it's all about speed there are no cheat codes here I mean it's all about speed there are like no cheats here not really unless you're like plagiarizing and that's like a whole whole other different ball game don't plagiarize people <laughs> not cool I mean it's good to use references as inspiration but to just full on copy someone's work and say it's yours change one or two things and then just say it's yours uh, it's totally wrong what you probably want to do is you want to get a whole bunch of different things and try and mix those together um, and to make your own individual character I mean that's how Roger Rad Rabbit was made you know so so just just feel free to like mix and try and come up with something unique I mean because no matter how hard we try we're always gonna copy or plagiarize something you know it's because we we draw something and we look at it you know everything we draw is something that we've looked at unless we drew it from a dream and even if we did draw it from our dreams it was still something that we seen that we probably subconsciously mixed together to make that image so to a certain extent you want to um, use what you see um, for your drawings and stuff like that but on the other hand you want to respect other artists because you don't really want um, to be working on something and then all of a sudden um, somebody else has like actually stolen your idea you see there's a difference between um, being inspired by somebody else's work and using certain elements not all elements but certain elements that they have um, and incorporating it into your own and helping you develop and grow as an artist but it's another thing entirely when you are um, just just taking taking someone else's work and it's a very touchy subject but but yeah if you want to get into this industry you'd have to learn uh, the difference and the techniques and stuff like that to use to like stay away from um, copywriting someone else's work alright so we're gonna work in the mouth a little bit get in close get a sharp um, crease there Damon standard brush um, <clears throat> still filling out the form
feel like I got the general form a little bit, so I'm going to dial that intensity down on the clay buildup so it can help me like get more shapes, get more form. Um, looking at both sides and sculpting. Looking at the camera angles because it's 3D, you know. It, it, you're going to look at all angles, not just one or two angles. So it's good to learn how to get form in <coughs> without looking. So it's turning out pretty good so far. I'm going to turn this down some so that I can see the references more better. Um, and so it kind of has like strong cheekbones a little bit. So I'm going to use the move tool to pull some of these edges out closer together so it makes it like a little stiff jawbone but I'm not liking how that's looking so I'm gonna um, use the trim dynamics brush to take that down some use the smooth um, find some sort of a medium in between there um, pull this down uh, get some more form in there when I shade and I decide to make calls on shading specific areas, um, even if I'm looking in one view, I know that it needs to be pushed out or pushed in based on the lighting. The lighting helps me um, visualize like the form of my creature character um, without me always having to look around. So I do uh, look at the lights and I study how the light is bouncing off and moving on the object. Um, to detect the object's form without always having to move around so much and it's very helpful and it saves time um, of course you do need to still move the camera angle around and stuff like that just to be sure that you're um, getting the angle right and everything like that but yeah it's just little tricks teach yourself little tricks um, and, and, and it comes with experience, you know. Um, and that's why I decided to sculpt um, so much Pokemon. Because it would it, it would just give me a whole lot of experience. I mean, the Pokemon scopes I make um, are never meant to be... It, it's not something I would use for my, for my demo reel or anything like that. But, but I'm just... Some, you, gotta, you have to be committed to learning and growing. And it... Although it may not be something that I can use for um, my demo reel, it's going to show. It's going to show in all my work. So it's like it makes you have to work that much harder and produce that much more work. And it, and it really shows. It makes you more comfortable. And to me, being comfortable is the most important thing in your field. Because if you're not, if you, if you're not comfortable with your work, um, you, you're not going to impress anyone else, let alone yourself, you know. So, with me, I try to always better myself, you know. Like, take it to the next level. And I can't impress myself or impress anyone else if if I'm not comfortable with what I'm doing. So, I practice to be comfortable. So that I'm like, if I want to make a shape, I I just make the shape, and I don't and I don't have trouble or I don't struggle with doing it. And I try to come up with new reasons. I mean, new ways to um to um you know um get better results faster because it's all about speed. Um, I mean, right now I'm going a little bit slow, but um. You know, I'm introducing the tools and showing things, but I'm sure the speed is definitely going to pick up um, using the clay build tool. Um, getting this form out. Okay. Um, I think I kind of, it's, it's looking kind of good with the shapes now a little bit, but I'm going to work on it f on his facial shapes a little bit longer before I jump into... Um, 
I press tab to take off the um, side menu. I don't really need that. Um, and then I'm just going to, yeah, just working on the shapes because that's the most important thing. You don't want to rush it and jump into it and cover all the basic, all the, like, like in the past, I used to, I used to just jump in and like try and rough out the whole entire thing, like make a stick figure and then try and make that stick figure look, look amazing and then, and then try and reshape everything later. But I find that it's easier to, for me, for my workflow purposes and stuff like that, it's easier to, to get it right the first time and then move on because you don't want to go back to it later. You don't always feel like, or you might not even have time even to um, go back to it later. So it's sometimes it's a good idea to, um, you know, make sure you have it right the first time before you walk away from it. Um, uh, of, course, of course, there may be tweaks and touches, uh, touch ups, but you don't want to walk away um, from something necessarily when, when you already know what you're gonna gonna make. You know, like we already have our references here. We already know what the goal is, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to make. But if we didn't have any references and we were just like freestyling it, then I would um, start off with. Um, making the general form and then tweaking everything but because it's kind of handed to us um, then there's no need to like like rush out the general form and the general shapes um, right now I have this lump on the top of his head and I would solve that by um, using the trim dynamics brush to get that flattened out um, trim dynamics works really good with um, you know, forming, like taking lumps off or, or s slicing it off without having to, it's the quickest way um, that I've come across. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> um, still looking at checking the mesh, I mean checking the form in and looking at all the different angles, lining them up and seeing which ones work best. Now going into the side view, taking that up too, making sure. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Just still working on the form, looking at different angles, looking at that angle now. Yeah, when you're pulling out the reference images, you, you and you have a character you're working on, um, you kind of want to get as many angles. You want to anticipate which angles you're going to need. I mean, of course, you can work without them, but <clears throat> in the long run, it's going to look better when you um, work work with the design that the original creators made. I mean, because that's like the closest way you're going to get what you want, um, which is to make it look close, close, as close to the design as possible. And how better to do that than use the same um, angles that they made and used. Um, pushing out the form and then using the um, trim dynamics to get like a sharp edge crease right there. Um, Yeah, it's looking nice. Yeah, and sometimes when you're working in your work, um, it doesn't always look the best. And sometimes you may even feel like quitting. But just know that as soon as you bypass that part where it looks 
bad if you keep if you stick with it and you work with it it's like a relationship you <laughs> your model that you're working on that you're sculpting on um, needs needs love and, and just needs a little bit of treatment you know and if you stick with it and you work with it it could turn out to be something great you know so so don't always be so quick to abandon work that doesn't look or feel like it's going to be the greatest because if you stick with it and you bypass that crappy like how it looks crappy then 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 you can like go to take it to the next level and and reach something that's good so if someone else wanted to scope that same thing you sculpted and they scoped it and it's it's not looking good they're probably going to want to quit and if you stick with it then I mean it's, it's it's all about knowing what the what 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 a workflow is like so if you so if you stick with it and you work hard then you're going to produce something good it's just that simple the longer you work on it the longer the more time you spend on it the better it's going to look and the more experience you're going to get you can you can stop it and you can you can say okay I'm done with this part I'm gonna move to the next part okay I'm done with this part I'm gonna move to the next part and the next thing you know um, you've done all the parts and you have two options you can either stop it stop working on it from there or you can go over it again and fine-tune and refine every last shape um, most of the times when I'm doing these Pokemon speed sculpts because they are basic forms and general shapes I don't really um, <clears throat> do a second pass. I just scoped it out really quickly, and then I um, and then I um, I, I sculpt it out quickly, and then I and then I just color it, and then I do a little quick turnaround, and then I'm done. Add the music, put it on YouTube, boom. Um, but yeah, I love helping people. When I'm in school, I go to the Art Institute uh, in Santa Monica, and when I'm in school, I help people all the time. It feels good. You know, in life, you have to you have to give back. You can't just take and take and take and think you're going to get ahead in life by taking and not giving back, because if you take without giving back, you're like going to delude yourself, and then eventually, it's going to catch up with you, and and I mean you're only gonna get as much as you give so that's what I believe um, so just working out these general forms um, when I'm working like right now I feel like it takes I'm taking too long like I should have gotten all this done already like right now I'm having that feeling like um, but I know that the process is, I feel like a little slowed down and I feel a little slowed down when I'm doing these tutorials and stuff like that. Even when I'm doing the, um, um, the speed scopes of the other Pokemon, I feel like, um, doing it a little slow, like I could be faster. And, um, sometimes you have to take your time and sometimes you have to, um, use your instinct, you know, to, to try and get it done faster, like use your angles, and it all comes with experience, so all that means is that you have to, to, um, practice. I'm gonna do a quick save, um, alright, now I'm going to, I made a shortcut for the, make the tubes brush, and that's what I'm gonna use to make his ear. I'm going to make the brush smaller and then I'm going to draw a stroke out. It's going to make that and then I'm going to put the line, the cursor up, the, the, the mouse up to the that line point. It's going to turn the circle area blue and then I'm going to make that bigger so that I can now move move this around um, interactively. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at all the different angles and I'm making a general making a general placement of where this thing is going to go. Where is it going to go? Alright, so I look at the front view and looking this way 
goes this way. Um, just a rough, rough guesstimation. Um, taking it a little further. Um, looking at all the angles again. Keep just keep on checking. Um, all right. This is good. So I'm going to click on the mesh that away from the cursor and that made it like this. So now I'm going to pull out the shapes and form a little bit and and try and get it to match up closely before I decimate it. All right. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to decimate it, and then I'm going to round off that edge from the top part. And, yeah, go from there. All right. You see, I decimated it, and the topologic merged. And now I'm just working on the form, the shape of it a little bit. I'm going to use the trim dynamics to take off the top. Um, I mean, all sculpting is, to me, is problem solving, you see. You have, you just look at the shape, and you, you see what it takes to make the shape. You have the top of the head, and you say, oh man, that's flat. What do I need to do to make this flat, like like how that's flat? And then, and then you just figure out which tool and which is the best way for you personally, and, and what works best for you on how to how to get your 3D object to where it needs to be. So, like with areas like this, um, I find it best to just use Trim Dynamics to flatten that out. It makes it nice and sharp really quickly. Trim Dynamics is a good friend of mine. <laughs> I use I only use like a certain amount of tools. I don't I don't go crazy with using a whole bunch of tools. Um, clay build up. Get some more form in here. Smoothing it out, more form, smoothing it out, more form, smoothing it out, and yeah, it seems complex when you look at the whole entire form, but through experience, you know, um, if you just stick to it and work with it, you know what it can become, you know, um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of people com at, at, at my school, they compare themselves to me. And they're like, oh, Jonathan, um, you're, you're so good. I'm never going to be as good as you and stuff like that. But um, it's discouraging for you to be able to um, compare yourself to someone else. I mean, a lot of people think that they can um, get by or they can cheat by, um, by just going in there and they're automatically good at it. And other people assume that other people go in there and sculpt and then that they're just automatically good and they're automatically better but in life they 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 probably dr practice drawing more why they're better than you at that you know what i mean you shouldn't take offense to it you should just practice more you know because i mean just like i was saying earlier um you want to feel as comfortable as possible making something and even sometimes I um, spend a lot of time um, working on parts that seem like it shouldn't take too long, and and when and you just you just have to practice, you know. So next time you'll learn. And and it's it's not about trying not to make any mistakes. It's about when I'm making things. I want to make mistakes. Mistakes, they're my best friend. Because if you make a mistake, it's important. That's the crucial moment. That's the most important moment about the whole entire thing to me when you're gaining experience. It's about identifying those mistakes and learning from it. I want to know everything that's wrong with that mesh. I don't just want a funny feeling that, ah, something's wrong. I want to know, okay, this arm is... Uh, bigger than that on this arm or smaller than this arm. You want to look at references all the time.
when you're sculpting and you're looking at your mesh and you wanna it just it just comes with practice like I say because you are your own teacher you know no matter how many classes you take or what you do in the end they're only gonna take you so far they're gonna introduce to you the software eventually you're gonna work in a studio and people are gonna tell you okay fix this change that but but in the end you know you have to be able to see what the problem is and and fix it you know you can't just go around the place like hoping they're not gonna see the problems that you made well you can do that sometimes but I mean that's not helping you and that's not helping them um, so so just just be able to identify what the problems are and use methods and techniques to solve it um, plain and simple all right I think that's a good general shape of the head uh, we can always go back to it later uh, perhaps take it inside a sculptress or whatever and and tweak it up some more um, but I'm going to continue on to the rest of the body now. Um, I'm going to use the clay tubes brush, draw out a line, adjust my brush size outside of the scroll, um, the tool area, and touch it, and move it to the center. And that's his neck. Now I just have to line it up properly. Um, look at all the angles. You see, if I turn it at this angle, which is near this angle, it's too close up. It's too close. So that means I just have to move this back some. Um, and now when I look at it this way, it doesn't seem too too close up anymore. But that bend seems a little intense. So, all right. Press P for perspective mode. Then tweak it some more. Looking at all the different angles. All right, I'm going to try and speed this up some. Speed it up some. All right. I only have a certain amount of minutes to record this video, and I want to get done this um, a lot done as soon as possible. Um, forming out the neck um, using the bulge tool like hmm which tool is that I think oh, excuse me um, all right so now I'm gonna make the upper body and so then I'm gonna insert an object like insert a sphere and then I'm gonna click and drag pull that out. I also have a hotkey for that. Um, then I'm going to use the grab tool. Then just just make a general form shape of it. Front view, side view. Take off the perspective. Um, and then just form it. Form it. Make it look like it's chest. And I'm going to form it first before I um, decimate it because it's easier to work with smaller geometry. Um, less geometry you see it's a lot less it's not so dense and because of that it's easier to manipulate um, when it comes to basic form I don't need like a whole bunch of geometry to, to make this general form um, so I mean it's only so much I can do uh, with this right now so I'm going to just settle settle for this general form right now and then I'm gonna add another sphere um, to work out some more of the detail uh, okay but I'm gonna use this the clay buildup tool to get a little bit more form right here alright okay I'm gonna decimate it and quickly add some form nothing nothing too too nice just just something quick help me get a idea 
of form and proportion. So I need to make this bigger, I need to make this smaller. And making general um, general shapes helps. Um, so I'm looking up at the shoulder. I'm looking at a lot of different um, images right now. Looking at this one, looking at this one, looking at this one. Just seeing which ones, which what is his form, what is Muse's form. And what shapes are there? How does what connect to what? Is it a sharp line? Um, like from his neck area, is it like a sharp, crisp edge line? Or is it like slowly blended it in there? And, and I see that it's like a small mixture of both. So that's good. And behind him, it's kind of like a smooth, smooth back. Um, so just bring some more of that out. Smooth it in. All right. Take this down some so we can see our model a little bit better. Um, and I'm still not used to this new feature in ZBrush where you're able to see through the mesh and see through the model and stuff like that, but it's really helpful. It's better to have it this way um, in a lot of different cases than it is to to have it next next to each other. I mean, if you want to, you can um, easily just shrink it down to the same size as the Mewtwo right here and then get a general idea of the proportions is see if you have your proportions right but you don't want to be too um, um, dependent on that again because each of these proportions could be different and what you want to do is you want to get a guesstimate of which proportion this one is and and like you know um, how would you want yours to look so through a quick examination I realized that my um, my um, mesh his neck is a little bit long a little bit long a tiny bit um, so I'm just I, I made a mask right here and I'm gonna slowly bring this up um, but a lot of that would be easier to um, um, identify if I um, quick save a lot of that would be easier to identify if I um, start making the other shapes first um, grabbing it out and proportioning it All right. All right. Getting that form out and working on the form. It's a lot easier when you don't have a lot of geometry. Using the grab tool, looking at all the different angles. Um, and then right now I'm checking Mewtwo's posture right now, seeing if he stands up straight, seeing if he bends, what pops out, what pushes in and just take away that mass so I can pull out some more from his chest area. I noticed that some of it pushes out. Uh, I can easily use the clay build up tool to push some of that out but I'm gonna worry about that later and take a mental note of that and move on. These parts right here they are um, it's supposed to be a smooth transition so I dynamesh that and I'm going to um, smooth that out now. You see it's just looking at the shapes, examining the shapes and seeing what needs to be done. Um, we're pretty much doctors when we when we scoped. Basically you look at your patient, you see okay his back it needed to be smooth but it but it had a rough transition so what do you do? You use your different tools to fix his back. And there you go. Problem seen, problem solved. Um, so now we have his upper body made. All right, a little bit. Um, all right, so now I'm going to add another sphere. Bigger now. And then I'm going to use the grab tool back away from it 
and push it around. Mewtwo's character is a little bit heavy on the bottom. Um, um, I see the way that the best way for me to deal with this is to um, by looking at these uh, the references. Um, it seems as though it's twice as width. We can always check that by lining it up. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it's like a smooth transition. His legs, his legs overlap everything, so that's going in second. But, but it, but the rest of it is is like smooth. So, so I'm gonna um, gonna dynamesh all this together. Um, I have to make sure it's dynamesh. Yep, nice and dense. Um, now I'm going to make a mask over on this side and then I'm going to open up the side menu and then it's a little harsh right here it's a lot of geometry so it's hard it would be hard to um, do that so I'm going to polish it made a polish shortcut and it's going to polish the mask side the side that's not masked um, just checking which tools do what and right now we're looking to polish get rid of these lines but that doesn't always work to the the way that we would like it to because um, you know, right now it's just too dense to be able to do that job um, I would have to polish it way too much for it to um, work that way alright I'm just gonna it's a hundred when I polish it that way. So I'm just gonna take that polish up to ten thousand. I mean one thousand. See if that did anything. Um still giving me trouble, so I'm going to ten thousand see how that looks and if this still doesn't work um, I don't want to risk crashing it so I'm just gonna um, go to the this menu and look at brushes and then I'm going to look for um, the smooth because right now I want to use smooth strong and if I use smooth strong then I'll be able to handle dense geometry without um, without um, having to worry about you know so I'll press shift and it's taking care of it it's smoothing it out um, it might be hard for you to see but it is so I'm gonna zoom out and then do it and then you're gonna see that it quickly smooths what 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 even um, the polish tool couldn't accomplish um, not without using a ridiculous amount of numbers and calculations um, so you can skip all those calculations you can skip all that pressure that it put on the computer CPU and you can just um, yeah so I'm not going to smooth these areas smooth polish is very strong um, it's exactly what you need when you're working with dense geometry so now I'm going to take it into the um, clay build I'm gonna gonna shave some of this off because it's his legs his legs area that's the part that made up um, that that bulge and that form around his side area so the width of his waist uh, his legs covered up most of that now um, there's gonna be some um, intersecting and stuff like that in his legs so I really don't have to worry too much about uh, that right now um, but and I also don't even have to worry about all this because the clay build, I mean the the strong smooth can take care of most of that. And I'm just gonna use the clay tool to to take away a lot of that um, roughness. And then I'm gonna use <laughs> excuse me, use the smooth I mean the use the trim dynamics tool to um, smooth it out. I find I use the, I find that um, using the 
trim dynamics tool uh, is just as uh, quick as using the um, the the polish tool. Um, and I have to admit, I don't use the polish tool a lot because I use the trim tool, and and it works for me. Whatever works for you, like I said, go ahead and and do whatever works for you, whatever you're more comfortable with. And and I feel closer to the mesh and closer to everything, closer to the workflow when I do it like this. Um, all right. All right. So it looks like a bit like a raisin, but that's fine. Don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, also, that because it's pretty dense, we can take these numbers down and then um, down and mesh it again. And when it does that, it takes away some of the um, the density. See, it's not so dense now, and it's easier to uh, manipulate certain parts and stuff like that. But but just know that if you don't have the um, the project detail in the Dynamesh, that is a chance you might lose some of that detail, like in its facial area. I was worried about that a little bit, but but it's like base mesh, so um, not really too much of a concern. We're not trying to get um, too much right now from there. Um, so. So right now I'm going to add his feet. I'm going to start off right here. All right, it's mirrored. So then now I'm going to take that off. I know that because it's a new object, it's a different poly group. So I'm going to double, hold shift, click, hold shift and control, and then click it to to leave it alone, and then and then and then use the the tool um, split hidden. So now it's two different subtools. Um, I use that as in my different menu. I use that as a shortcut. Um, so if you just find it um, in the menu um, and split hidden, uh, let me show you where that's located. Um, I think it's located in the subtools and and split, and then this tool right here is split hidden. So it's in the subtools. All right, and then in the subtools you can see that um, we have two different subtools now. Um, um, so I'm going to use the the W, press W to select the, um, and then I'm going to pull it up to get that general shape of uh, Mewtwo's leg, and then I'm going to press R to rotate this outward. Um, Legs need to be a little bit thinner, so I'm going to press W again and scale it inward some. Um, still holding W, I'm going to now use this and roughly shape it out a little bit more. Um, uh, it seems like it needs to be a little bit, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to press E scale it out some W push it in um, looking at it I the rest of it I can um, pretty much um, I can pretty much um, use the move tool to shape it out some um, didn't mean to do that okay um, now I'm gonna move it and shape it, and get it the way, make it look the way I want it to look. Um, um, it's a little harsh on the edges. Now I, I have two options. I can either um, I can either shape it off with a dynamics tool, or I can push it inward and try to accomplish the same results. Uh, I think if I push it inward some more, then I smooth it off. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good enough. Um, there we go. Getting that shape in, and getting general shapes like this is easiest to do. 
um, for me when I um, have low low geometry to work with this is what it looks like this is how low it is it's beautiful beautiful shape sometimes I even uh, make entire meshes especially when I'm working on my own characters that I haven't yet designed yet just free freestyle sculpting I um, make the whole entire general form with simple spheres instead of using uh, Z spheres or whatever uh, which is a terrific tool I used it on the um, I used that um, sometimes I sculpt the face of a character and then I sculpt and then I use Z spheres for the whole entire body just to pose it and get the general shapes and forms it's it's amazing um, and okay and then I um, getting the still getting the shape of the legs in it feels like they're a little bit too forward so I'm gonna pull those bad boys back some um, now I'm gonna uh, okay okay so now I'm going to uh, press um, use the um, make tubes to make his back part of his leg pull that out um, and then Mewtwo's legs kind of like curve outward which means that it would be like bam bam you know so um, I would have to make sure these things are formed correctly get a little closer in there to shrink the brush instead of changing the brush size I like to zoom in because that also adjusts the brush size if you don't have that new feature with the dynamics brush size turned on so so um, check both angles always check all of your angles before you make a commitment um, it's like if you if you have a somebody that you're interested in you know just just make sure make sure they're not a crazy person before you you go off you know trying to work on that relationship so <laughs> check the leg make sure it's not twisted in any way in any angle before you um, before you decide you want to dynamesh it and have to because it's best to fix this right now than to have um, then to dynamesh it and then try and hurry up and rush and go along with it and then you'll end up having like like so much geometry you'll need to like push around it won't even be funny and um, by me doing this now I'm saving like so much time saving so much time um, later on so I'm looking in the future and I'm like um, you know like if you're if you're lazy then you might as well do it the right way you know what I mean because if you're not lazy then 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 I mean it the time could be better spent me me tweaking like dense geometry than me tweaking this this low low res geometry so um, I'm trying to envision his leg and what it would look like um, like that I'm gonna see I'm, I see I need to make further changes his legs are pushed outward and what I want them to be is um, inward more so I'm gonna try this it's always trial and error so I'm gonna like lightly mask this uh, hold shift to hold mask and click it to feather it some mask it some more and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna rotate rotate um, rotate the back part of it so that um, it's curved the way I want it to be curved select move and push it right there push this right here and rotate that angle all right rotate it back some take that off so we can see it better all right a lot of this can be solved with uh, um, with the uh, that didn't really seem to work so I am going to um, just just try it again there we go 
that's what I want because the legs are going to curve outward so I'm going to need it to go this way look at it in the back view a little bit and push that back some um, then now the legs are slightly curved inward so when you look at it from the side view it's more curved outward so then now I can use the get a good angle on this um, first I should like fix this up some um, okay by moving it and then all right working on that mass area okay okay um, just making sure the leg is alright and the form of the leg is alright um, and I'm gonna select this part mask this part off feather it okay take some of that mask off put some more on and then basically I want to move it outward some then take the mask off show the rest of it by holding control shift and then clicking on the empty space all right and I did that so that uh, this can move out some more um, yeah. all right and then check it check the angles um, still not looking the way I want it to um, I might have to um, dynamesh this and because it's like the form of his leg twisted that way um, let's look at the references check what the reference is again you see sometimes you get stuck on parts like this and and yeah his leg bends alright so I'm going to quickly solve this it's kinda hard for me to get it by looking at th this is where the limits of the working with the spheres goes so it's it's good for getting the base shape but if I want to go in there and make it look more like his leg which I really want to do uh, I'm gonna have to dynamesh it which I just did and um, go in there with the clay build tool and then just just fix more of that form you see right then and there it just just quick saved for me so now I have to worry about saving less and the reason I don't really want to manually save and that I want to let quick save do all the work is because um, when you're when you save inside of ZBrush and you're using your um, your um, your smooth tool and everything like that it feels like your your settings adjust a bit or something and it gets more intense so if you so if I'm using the clay build up tool and then I save this scene save it if I save it then then I feel like then the then the um, then the brush is going to be more intense and it's a glitch because later on it does feel like it calms down but it feels like it takes a good amount of time before um, the brush goes back to normal and so scoping out the legs making sure they look right um, I think my brush is a little too big um, pulling that out some I'm just trying to make it look right from all angles. Um, okay, change back to the clay buildup tool, and yeah, how does that leg look? Um, moving in. It's like a seamless transition when you have the right uh, keys and shortcuts, hotkeys and shortcuts made. I a stump would be better um, for um, to to merge with the, the the part of the foot rather than a flat top. So I'm just making a stump right here um, because when I dynamesh all of this and I um, and I um, you know merge it all together, um, it's better to you know have. have it um, 
a smooth edge rather than a than a sharp angle because you don't want to have to try and smooth that to make it look like the right size if you could just um, uh, smooth it right now. So I'm going to dynamesh this so I can have more geometry so the smooth doesn't have such a drastic effect on it. Uh, and that worked. Um, so now keep on sculpting and uh, yeah. All right. Still pushing out the form a little bit in his leg using the grab tool. Pushing that out some. Checking in it. It's looking pretty good. All right. Um, working on the feet now. Um, so I'm going to get a good angle where I think his legs should curve out at, which should be like right here. This type of angle. So I'm going to slightly move it like this. And then I'm going to use the clay um, clay tubes brush to get that shape. All right. Now that I have the shape, I see that I need to angle it right. So then I'm going going to go into the um, strokes menu, and then I'm going to go into lock start. And now what that does is it lets me be able to pull on this thing without having to worry about me pulling the whole entire thing like a train. You know, it just just pulls on specific parts and it lets it keep that main position. So that if I'm um, if I want to angle this and move it, and I want that part to stay right there. Uh, it'll it'll do so. Um, lining it up, checking the height, general height. Um, seems pretty good. Seems like everything is matching up fairly well. When I add the tail part, I'm going to need to go a little bit farther down, but that's fine we haven't made the tail yet and we haven't made that extra space down there so <clears throat> so I'm going I mean you can like smooth out the extra parts um, but what I'm gonna do is I need this to be a little bit thicker and the quickest way to make this a little bit thicker is to take a snapshot of the curve and then I'm gonna move the curve again now it's two different parts of the curve but now I can easily make it thicker without having to um, do too much. Um, so I'm just going to take another snapshot and move it out some near the foot part. You see this saves so much time. So much time. Um, it's, it's gold. Some gold tips right here, people. <laughs> All right. Um, um, working on that form. Take another snapshot. Why not? And then just okay. All right. I'm gonna try and flip it on the other side. All right. So we got that to work. Um, all right. Let's see if we can get away with this. I'm going to try, experiment, get another snapshot, and push this out some. And that totally worked. So trial and error, people. So if it doesn't work, all you have to do is press that magical undo button. And you see now I got a whole bunch of form here without having to work too hard on it. And that looks pretty beautiful. Beautiful, just beautiful. All right, so that's a really quick way sculpting out getting the form. Now all I have to do is dynamesh this bad boy. All that geometry is connected now. And I'm going to use that uh, clay build up, smooth, strong, and everything like that to get this thing as smooth as possible. All right, took off the uh, see-through feature it's just so I can quickly get this form in you know um, smooth that out it wasn't too much of a, a heel get some of this form in some of those lines in 
take some of that off. Um, it's beautiful. It's looking real nice. All right. Keep smoothing. Um, keep smoothing. Keep smoothing. Uh, clay build up smooth. Still using smooth strong, by the way. Um, which has aided me well. Um, just working on some of this form. Um, man, that looks good. All right. Um, work a little bit more on the knee. Get some more of that form out there. Smooth it. It's not too dense, so it's it's good to work with. Um, still, still fairly easy to work on. Um, put a little bit more right there. Take a little some off right there. And then smoothing this bottom part. And after I smoothen this bottom part, we're going to go back to checking out the mesh and seeing what we can do with that. But just making sure it's not so um, nubby. And I know that it's going to curve back. It's going to allow if I'm going to try and make this a little bit, touch the floor a little bit more. Check it. Boom. Touches the floor now. And then I know he has two nubs, two toes, so that I'm just gonna work out the form right here some to to prepare his feet for for the toes. Um, and with the toes, you know, it's nothing too complicated. Just gonna add add a sphere, form it around, probably multiply it, or just just redo it from scratch. You know, I don't mind. Um, yeah. Then okay. All right, so we have the feet. The feet are firmly placed on the floor. I'm going to save this. Uh, saved. All right, now I'm going to check on the smooth strong and see if it's intense. I mean, um, the clay buildup. And it is intense, but that's fine. We can just, um, we're not going to really work with that right now. And hopefully by the time we get back to using it, it will be... Um, back to the way I'm used to it being. Um, looking at all angles and adjusting it because you know it's 3D. It's going to be seen from many angles not just one. Not like an image. Um, Alright I think now we're ready to work on the toes. Alright um, and it seems extremely simple the feet, the toes. So I don't even think I'm going to need to add a sphere. Um, I think all I'm going to need to do is Dynamesh. Um, so I'm going to Dynamesh first, and then I'm going to so I'm going to use the Smooth, and Smooth Strong might come in handy now, blocking out that the first toe, and blocking out the second toe. Okay, and then Dynamesh again, blocking out the first one, blocking out the second one. Just checking, just going around and looking and checking. I don't have a lot of images on the feet, so this is the foot that I'm going to have to use as reference, which is fine. But if you were to um, use this for a feature film or something like that, you'd you'd want to you want to pull up a second reference images to be sure, uh, because some of these references are fan art, and it's not always good and safest to use fan art. Sometimes you want to just really go in there and if you have to pull up the um, pull up the Pokemon movie if your friend has Pokemon movie or anything like that which I'm sure uh, you can find a Pokemon movie from somewhere YouTube probably has Pokemon movies playing or at least clips you can pause those clips, study take a screenshot and just put it together as references um, but yeah, you you you, you want to just be aware of a lot of things when you're gathering your reference images, and and don't always use fan art uh, for references and features, especially because especially when you're trying to make a character that everyone is familiar with, especially when you're trying to make it look exactly like the character, then you definitely want to um, look at the original references. But if you're making it um, different and you're stylizing the creature and everything like that, then it might not be so. Might, might not be so excuse me critical for you to use um, 
the original references, but I, I would always recommend um, pulling up a video using references rather than um, using using uh, fan art, um, especially 2D work. Um, so even though I don't use references um, like that for um, um, using my Pokemon speed scopes, again, like I said, I don't use my speed scopes for demo reel purposes or anything like that or movie purposes so I'm not gonna um, I don't do it that way I mean because it's a touchy subject and, and and you might have a hardcore fan out there who who knows um, how Mewtwo's foot look in there and they're just gonna look at that and they're gonna see that you didn't do your proper research and then and then it's just gonna take you down a notch um, and you never know how ugly these things can get. Um, maybe, I mean, you just want to be careful and do things right the first time. You don't want the director coming to you and telling you, um, do it over. Um, it's not how the foot looks. Um, so, so you just, you just want to make sure you cover all bases, especially when you're producing things for, uh, professionally. Uh, working on that heel part. Uh, sounded like thunder outside. Haven't had thunder for a while. But I'm safe inside, so it's fully welcomed. <laughs> I love rainy weather. I love I love gloomy looking weather. Twilight weather where it's dawn and there's like no sun out. I don't really like the sun blazing in my face. I would rather it not be. Um, but it's always good to have a little sunlight sometimes. Sometimes you go with the friends, you go into the beach, you're hanging out, and it's getting that, getting those UV rays is good. It's good, real nice. So, <coughs> all right, still working on the foot, tweaking it up a little bit, uh, just working on the general form, uh, working on the support balls for the bottom part of the foot uh, so you can stand on um, so this is what it looks like generally all right we're gonna move back on that later possibly but it's good enough to move on to the next part um, which is gonna be the arms um, you know what um, I'm just gonna connect that back part of the neck part because it's such a quick thing to do use the clay tubes tool first we're gonna switch to uh, this part because they're two different tools um, because of the legs how they're designed um, and we could most definitely connect them but um, it might uh, it could cause problems later but I'm just gonna leave these unconnected uh, always because it's just gonna be an easier process to do everything uh, okay I think I, I accidentally turned on dynamics. I, I, I turned it back off. And all right, now the brush is normal again. There we go. All right, connecting the back of the neck. Looking at the references again, turning back on see through. And ha. Huh. Um, gonna use the clay tubes brush, turn down the. Um, the um, Accidentally turned on dynamic again. All right, cut it. All right, now I'm gonna size it down some and look at the placement. It's like right in the middle of his neck, and then it curves like a S a little bit. So I'm gonna curve that like that. That looks fairly good. All right, now I'm gonna cut off bend and then drag this to the center. You see, when you cut off bend, it doesn't bend the object, and you can you can drag it to the center, just just like I said. Yeah, um, and its estimated place is roughly right there. I don't have any images to show the exact of the behind his head, but this is a good rough estimation, and I'm going to leave it like that. Um, all right, so I'm going to take off. I'm going to put back on bend, and I'm going to click on an empty part of the mesh, 
and yeah just leave it like that and when the time comes when I need to uh, decimate it I will huh but let me just let me see I want to smooth this but all right now I'm gonna press control D and hopefully that smoothed it did it yeah it did all right now I'm going to press the polish button a little bit and that smoothed in and out uh, I'm gonna duplicate it again put it all by itself and push up the polish a little bit more now it's nice and smooth look how smooth that is oh man that's smooth smooth real smooth all right and now um now I'm going to show everything with control shift and then click on an empty part of the mesh again and then now all of it has uh, now all of it is smooth and the reason why I um, separated it all by itself and smooth it and when I, I separate it all by itself to, to so that I can press control D to smooth to smooth what I have in view and then I um, use the polish tool so that I can uh, smoothen it all out and the reason I wanted to smooth this um, before I did anything else was because when I dynamesh this whole entire thing I don't want to have to work with dense geometry and try and smooth it and, and work like what we did before because before we wanted to smooth it but but then we had to go through all these different changes with, with the with with the with the waste area um, we had to like use that's when we first pulled out smooth strong and and we avoided all that and having to do all that by just smoothing it right here so you just learn along the way you know and especially when you have bigger shapes um, I, I see that when you have bigger shapes it's best to to smoothen it before you combine it so that um, so that when when you when it when you're preserving the smaller detail you also would preserve all that bigger detail so you just keep that in mind um, and I will too I'll keep it in mind um, now working on the arms. Um, arms are roughly around the waist area, it's a typical uh, size. So I'm going to angle it at this angle, and then I'm going to use the clay to. Uh, I can push it all the way right here if I want to, but I see the way it's angled, and I'm going to have to change that. Um, or I can I can leave it or I can okay all right now I'm going to um, hmm. I'm gonna plan this out in advance what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the foot and I'm going to take a snapshot and then I'm going to use this tool make it bigger make it much bigger so it covers more ground and then I'm going to slightly pull it out some slightly pull it out some so that you're getting a little bit more depth Take another snapshot, pull it out some some more. Go another angle, pull it out some some more. Take another. Nope, nope. Okay, take another snapshot and pull it up some. Okay. Take another snapshot and pull it back some. And do that. Alright, it's snapping to everything, so I'm going to take snap off. And. Alright. Alright. Now I'm going to pull it out. Because that snapping feature was making the uh, curve not straight and all funny. So the plan is to. Um, get out this general shape general form um, and then um, select that and then shift select this now shift select empty space um, or I can just press W and control click down on this and rotate it around and now I made a selection for this and not the arms that I'm gonna press and then I'm, I'm gonna um, click on an empty space and then now I don't have that selected um, so that I can now move the arms. Now I'm going to rotate them so that they're pointing outwards instead of inside of his body. 
you see this angle is proper but but the angle where it's curved in this way I want it to be able to curve out this way instead of in this way so so with that I'm just going to use a, a simple rotation but first I'm going to have to delete the mask on this part so I'm going to press control and then click a square in this empty space and then now this is not selected and we can easily um, rotate it in the proper axis by stopping right here so now it's curved this way and we can like slowly move it to the center and now when we press R to, for rotation and then we select the center of it and then we rotate it it's gonna it's gonna rotate this way so now it's gonna rotate along that axis so it looks even it even looks like he's moving his arm outward um, now it's just how much do we want it to uh, move okay so I'm gonna zoom out and get a better view and that looks like a good angle because I was using this as a reference um, probably pull this arm up some and then yeah seems pretty good but but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna these look like it's it, it could be a separate object because it's not connected well it is sometimes like with his underarm but mm, I think it could save a lot, lot more trouble from that crevice in between there if it was a separate object but if that was the case then I would make his whole entire upper part be a separate object because it's not connected from the back it's not connected from the front and it could have went along with the head um, but yeah just gotta keep stuff like that in mind before you start sculpting it's no big deal at all um, um, so and we could still change it if we wanted to uh, but for this video purposes I'm not gonna but if it was for production purposes I would change it what I would do is I'd like cut it in half and then like or duplicate it and take away one side like the lower half from the topper half and take away the top, top half from the lower half so it's like two different parts um, but not doing that um, it's it's it, that's more of a complex thing um, with the arms okay working back with the arms um, his legs are pretty thick all the way around pretty thick so I'm guessing I can move that some more inward more um, um, what I could do is I could separate the legs and then I can like form it out some and they're outward too so it's like completely thick legs um, that would just mean that I I, and I don't have to stick with the references especially so that I, I can just if I want I can just like move his arms upward right here so that it won't be any penetration inside the leg part um, and then um, let's check to see if there's any um, small curves so it would probably be best if I um, smoothen all that out but I'm just it's gonna take a lot of work to make these arms look smooth and normal so um, uh, I'm just gonna dynamesh this and it's taking a while please don't crash please don't crash <laughs> all right still saving I'm freaking out a little bit but I'm gonna play it cool and wait it out still still waiting all right okay and if it and if it crashes and it freezes or whatever um, I'm sure we haven't lost too much um, man this is really taking a while all right I mean with the video recording software and everything like that happening um, I'm sure um, yeah all right sorry for this wait people um, hmm. I think it'll probably be safer it looks like it already um dynameshed and all right all right so it's saved now okay it's saved now F it looks flawless it looks beautiful 
doesn't even look like I lost any resolution in the face or anything this whole entire time. And I barely took out the nostril length, but that's just because I took it down a notch. It is a phenomenal job on the um on this connecting part. I could barely even tell that um it connected. So um for right now that's a pretty smooth arm. Uh, later on, when it comes to getting to detailing the elbow, I'm going to turn back on the see-through function, but for now, I can cut it off. And, huh. and with that, that just happened. Um, I was I was pretty worried about it um, um, not working. So right now, I'm going to show you how to um, split this bad boy in half, more or less. Um, so first off, I'm going to make a mask. Um, covering uh, the area that I want to separate um, and then I'm going to duplicate it and the reason I'm doing this is because I plan on separating this top part from the bottom back part and just so that it's not so much work that has to be done and so it, it is good that you know how to do this um, so I'm just going to duplicate this first thing uh, Control Shift D, and now the object is duplicated along with the mask. Now I'm going to hide this part, and then I'm going to make a mask for that selection. Um, the shortcut for that is uh, Control W, but I changed it to something else. I'm going to Control Shift click this, and then now this is all by itself. Um, <coughs> and then so so now I'm going to go to my um, and then just delete hidden and then I'm going to click close holes and then um, smoothen out these edges parts and then after I smoothen out these edges then I'm going to dynamesh this bad boy um, but it wouldn't hurt to um, it's, it's such a smooth transition in between here and when I'm connecting it to the other mesh I would love to have more geometry um, on these parts so I'm just going to um, round off more space uh, so that you're able to um, and then I'm going to um, make the bottom a little bit more flat so you don't so it takes away less geometry and then I'm going to use the smooth to flatten all these sides um, flatten them out all right and then yeah just add some more around the edges make a little uh, crevice in there and bring this part out some more and and that's how you separate the first half and then I'm gonna dynamesh this and with the new features it's gonna be flawless and seamless didn't even feel like it did it huh well um, it, it totally did and that's how it looks great and it was fast too so now that's gonna save us lots of work so now I'm gonna look at the other one and that overlapping geometry makes it look like that and so I'm just going to press uh, I'm going to um, you know make a make a um, poly group for the selected mask and then I'm going to control shift and select it that's why we created that um, mask so it like saved time I'm gonna undo that though because I think we're gonna need some more parts um, that connects to it only part I really want to cut off is the head uh, kind of want to leave all the rest of it. Um, we can just smoothen that part out. It'll save us a lot of time and work if we just. Um, um, gonna still cut that part off though. Um, okay. All right. Now I'm going to. Um, make the poly group for the mask and then I want to control shift clicked on the part that I know is this part so if I like um, show the show the um, poly groups and then I control shift click this area that I know is not poly group then it's going to show this area and hide that area so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete the hidden and I'm going to close the holes now that the holes are closed then I'm going to um, basically fill out this form so that it's smooth go out of polygroup mode and I'm going to shave this part off so that the the edges aren't um, make sure I flatten this area out so that when I do show this part they're not overlapping 
like right here, it's overlapping and everything like that. So basically, what I can do is I can I can even leave this part showing so that um, and then just just like like you like press can, um, Alt to um, to push in that geometry. It doesn't look pretty right now, but um, it doesn't have to. It's never going to be shown or never going to be seen. But I'm just going to make it look um, smooth for topology purposes. It's going to be smooth, and it's not too much work. It's not going to take long at all, not long at all, to um, smoothen this out. So um, just going to hold Shift for smooth, strong, and then yeah, we pretty much are halfway done with solving this problem. And also. Um, you want to um, do it this way um, in, in production reasons because if you have more than one object then it's good to have it all rounded off and smoothed off especially when you retopologize and everything like that and it's starting to hell outside oh my hell is falling everywhere and it's hitting my window uh, haven't seen hell in a while. It's beautiful. All right, closing that window, getting back to work. All right, leave the window cracked a little bit for some ventilation. Always good to breathe. Um, get back to work. All right, excuse me for that little break. I just love this type of weather, and now I'm going to um, dynamesh this. So now it's only one poly group, and now I can um, sculpt it without having to worry too much about um, geometry. Hopefully, I can quickly just 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 tow through this this area right here. And and yeah, yeah. So right now we're basically just trying to to get a smooth form, smooth shape for this arm. Um, and what we can do is we can um yeah we can um we can we can we can scope and move around all this area right here and try and get it to look smooth or 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 shortcut shortcut or or we can um press um use the clay tubes make a general um line right here line it up um, to this because right now we're trying to get like a smooth surface a smooth shape and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into an empty area and scale it upward and click on it click on it just keep clicking on it making sure that that form gets nice and thick nice and thick all right so now we kind of don't even have to worry about getting a, a general smooth circular shape and people might say oh you're just being lazy. All oh, this is takes. I mean, you can just. You, why are you using it for such a simple process? But it's to me, it feels like it's genius. You know what I mean? You're getting that perfect shape, and it doesn't matter if I manually did it or not. Um, it just looks great. That's all that matters. So I'm going to take away that mask, shift it, and Control click, and then now it's all dynamesh together. Man, that looks beautiful. All right, now I'm going to smooth out these two edges, and this is a new new trick for myself. I haven't I haven't really used this all that often, but I'm I'm most definitely going to use it. Oh man, that looks real nice. And I didn't even have to go off and do all that hard work of manually doing it, and and it looks great. And the same thing we're going to do for this part right here. So just draw that line out, um, line it up properly and yeah basically smooth this out and move it and work it the way I want it to work alright so then I'm gonna change that brush size again once again now click on it okay this is what I'm gonna do I'm going to go to the strokes and then I'm going to go to um, where is it at where you at girl <laughs> I'm gonna go to uh, why do I feel lost right now? All right, I'm gonna go to where strokes at. I accidentally took it off. Okay, strokes, stroke. Put that right here. 
and then I'm going to go to Control Shift, click on the boxes. How do you show them all? Like Control Alt click. Oh, wait, no, cancel. Um, all right, all right. Um, what I'm looking for is the size. There we go. The curve modifiers, size, curve, fall off. This is the start of the curve. This is the end of the curve. And for right now, we do want the start of the curve to be smaller than the end of the curve. Uh, at a point right here, make this smaller. Bring this up some. It's not such a drastic change in its forearm. Click that again. Uh, resize this to make it bigger. Um, but now we're going to bring this down some. Click it again to test it out. All right, that's looking all right. Add another point right here. All right. All right, that is looking really nice. Real nice. Um, yeah, that is totally looking good. All right. <clears throat> now that we have that, we can click on the empty space to get rid of that curve. Um, shift. Uh, control click on an empty space to reverse that mask we're gonna go to uh, the just, and just push some of this stuff out we don't we don't need all that um, so just gonna tuck that inside of here so that way when we um, merge these pieces together it's nice and smooth nice and smooth all right reverse that mask um, compress control D to duplicate it, uh, duplicate that geometry, and then now I'm going to, um, to for the overall um, smoothness of it, I'm going to press that. Oh, that looks real nice. Try it one more time. It looks a little bit better. All right, now we're going to select everything and smooth it, and then now we have a great and terrific looking, looking geometry, smooth transition, without even having to manually sculpt and trying to get this form. Now it's good to practice and get the form, but I've done quite a bit of a practicing, and I think this tool works fantastic. And it's it's my pleasure to to give to you guys this um, new technique, and and when and if you feel comfortable using it, I'm sure it will assist and help you as much as it just helped me now. Um, so now now that we finished this part, uh, I think now is a good time to. Uh, show all of the I was gonna say now is a good time to save but now is also a good time to show all of the um, the geometry and then now this is what we have it took a couple of minutes to um, to get that um, all right I accidentally turned smooth dynamics on so I'm gonna turn that off um, make it smaller and I'm gonna push this bad boy in there some <coughs> all right now we have Mewtwo. So I'm going to save and work on these legs now. Save. Alright. Work on these legs some more. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a sphere. We'll just work on that again. Because if I wanted to push all this stuff out, it would take a lot of tweaking and manual work to get that done. And when I all I know is I want it's a simple circle shape, so I'm just gonna get this and use and you press W, and pull it out some, boom. All right, now I'm gonna push it in position. All right, general shape that we want. All right, I'm gonna make this bigger, bigger. All right, that is looking good. All right, now I'm just gonna rotate this out some and push it out. Um, all right, let me use the grab tool and just pull it. All right, it's a little thick right here. Let's look at the references. It's it's thick on the outside, but not that much, so I'm just going to push it in and fluff it down. And then, 
Yeah, this works and it saves a whole bunch of time. You see, it's very good that we didn't merge these parts because uh, it just it's it, it's it's a better decision for the for this character design. Um, all right, now that's nice and smooth. How much more should we push it down? We shouldn't make all our decisions based on one angle, but because the second angle that that um, seems like it's pretty pretty good. So we're just gonna form that. It looks like it cuts off pretty nicely, real nice. Um, and I think we're ready to dynamesh again. Make sure we're in the right subtool. Yes, we are. All right, now dynamesh that bad boy, and then we're just gonna clean up these edges a little bit with the smooth tool. Shouldn't be any problem. And uh, push that in. Yeah, we're pretty much good to go. Keep on smoothing. Keep on smoothing. Smooth. Wax on, wax off, right? <laughs> All right. I am going in circular motions when I'm smoothing it out. Um, I find that it helps the overall smoothing process. All right, it's looking good, looking good. All right, gonna press this quick save because it never hurts to have a backup, backup. All right, and now that we got this ready, we're gonna work on these arms, work on the fingers. All right, put that back up and show the mesh. Uh, hmm. All right. Now I'm going to select the uh, the curve quad fill, and then I'm going to draw a general. Make it make that smaller, so I can get more detail out of there. Draw a general hand shape. And then that's a general hand shape. And then I'm going to press, click on the empty space, press W, and I mean, and I'm gonna um, um, use the grab tool to manipulate this some. Um, and then I'm gonna um, then I'm gonna click once. So that with the um, with the trans the transpose line tool, <laughs> excuse me, and then I'm going to um, click, hold hold shift and drag on the last one so that it it drag, drags out the length, and then I'm going to um, use the um, the polish tool to smoothen off that edges. So now it looks like a like a fluffy hand. All right, check this geometry. Um, we have enough geometry to uh, form the hand and stuff like that. Um, so, so I'm going to. Um, hmm. It seems this hand is a little bit more thin. Um, okay. Um, all right. All right. Um, um, so what I'm gonna, uh, what I plan to do is I plan on like using the smooth strong tool to make this arm a little bit more thinner when it comes down to the hand. And you see, that's why you have to look at a lot of different references because all the um, references would tell you that. Well, not this one. That reference over there. Um, that reference over here. It's like it's still thick. And I, I think I like his hands being thick but right for right now it's a little too thick so right now I'm just gonna form the hand and then I'm going to judge how big I want the wrist and everything like that to be later um, so right now we're just forming the hand getting that main shape in And I'm not sure why my grab tool is so... Alright, now we got full grab. I don't know. The intensity was turned down. 
Um, but now I, I turned it back up because I, I was feeling like when I was grabbing, it was it was grabbing too slow, and I don't like that. So I'm turning it back up some. I'm just adjusting the grab size. I don't often do this. Um, actually, my first time adjusting the grab size. I mean the grab intensity. Um, but I think that's like a really good assist because sometimes you, you're grabbing and you want to feel like you're grabbing it and you're pulling it just the right amount. You don't want to feel like you're grabbing and you're pulling it and you're pulling too much or too little. So I'm turning that down a little bit. And a little bit goes a long way. You might have more control in if you just um, grabbed the right amount in the right way. Um, so now we're just going to look at this hand, look and see how it's positioned. Um, I can see that both sides are a little funky. <coughs> so I'm just gonna gonna mirror it over again. Um, oh, it's because I um, pulled out um, the hand and now it's acting the, the, the entire body. I must have accidentally moved it um, to the side some. So um, it's either two ways I can fix you used to fix this. I can either um, um, I should um, just just slide this over and get that point back in the center. Um, uh, take off symmetry and guesstimate this center, and then I'm going to um, use a mirror and wield again. So now it's back like new. All right. Now I got to move it forward some. Forward some. Um. Move it. Move it up some, and tweak it. All right, looks about right. Um, all right, now I'm gonna um, dot and mesh this, and then just just continue to work on the hand, forming the hand out and whatnot. Um, all right, I'm gonna. The hand seems to be um. There's like when I draw on it. Like right now, there's like it's pulling on both sides. So if you uh, um, if you use like like um, back face mask, then um, then then you'll um, be able to um, not draw on both sides, and then now it doesn't show um, penetration. Um, Um, yeah, uh, hold on just a minute. Just giving a little text message to somebody who called me. Um, all right, now I'm just going to just keep on working on the form on the hand. Um, and yeah. Pulling out that general form, um, not be a good time to um, adjust the, the size of his wrist. Um, you see, when you have the smooth strong on, you just just keep on working on those edges. It slowly, it slowly brings it inward and brings it down. Uh, slowly downs down on that um, intensity, so that you can like use the grab tool and move this side and push that down, so you can like get that crisp little area around there. Um, 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 and yeah, um,
the hands take a little bit of time. Sometimes making a hand takes as long as it takes to make a face. But I um, always try and work and find ways to um, make make hand making a, a quicker process. Um, and I love make I love making things from scratch. I don't like using uh, like base other objects. It just feels more unique this way, and you know. Because I know ZBrush does have those tools where you can insert, um, like the troll parts, like like insert an arm, like this is the troll part, and if I press M, if I press M, um, then I can like use this. Um, there's a hand right here, and I can just like drag it out and have this hand. Um, and I know there's like a hand for like the the, the two-sided one, but but we're not um, doing that right now. Um, excuse me. All right. Yeah. Modeling this handout, excuse me. Um, just getting this general shape. I know that uh, the character has balls at the end of his hand, his fingers, um, and I do I do see that his his fingers are a little bit thicker than this. So I'm just going to mask these, inverse that mask, and then I'm going to use that um, inflate tool to inflate each of these individual fingers. Um, that that saved me a lot of time. Uh, from having to manually go around and um, adjust each individual one.